morning, Church 247. Don't you wish we were all here together this morning? Don't you wish Joe Moore was here to tell everybody good morning, Church 247, and do the announcements and open us in prayer? Well, we've got the next best thing. We've got him right here on video. So welcome, Joe. You know, I woke up this morning with several thoughts on my mind. Uh, I thought about first how you and I have been so richly blessed with the opportunity to wake up as servants of Jesus Christ. And I thought about the fact that no matter what's going on in the world around us, you and I are still greatly loved and accepted in Jesus Christ. And then I thought about the fact that although as a body of believers, you and I can't assemble ourselves together, God hasn't lost sight of us, not individually or collectively as the body of believers at Church 247. And then I thought about how greatly blessed we are to have the technology God's given us that we're still able for a few moments in time to be able to share together as a body. So we're so grateful to God. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and just thank him for his goodness. Heavenly Father, this morning we come to you and Lord, we just want to lift you up and praise you and exalt you because Lord, you're, you're the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We love you and we thank you for loving us. And Lord, we've got several folks that we want to lift up in prayer. Uh, Lord, we pray for Poppy this morning. Uh, God, we realize that today is his birthday. And, and Lord, on his birthday, he's been going through a huge struggle and a huge change in his life. And Lord, we know it's been difficult on Poppy and it's been difficult on Clay and it's been difficult on Deb. So Lord, we just ask you, for just a small space of time today, would you drop into Poppy's room and just richly bless his life today? And God, we pray for Bootsy's mother, Betty Theo. Lord, would you just drop in on her today and just give her some added grace and added comfort and, and added love. And Lord, we pray for our brother, John Brock. God, we ask you to touch him and, and Lord, to take away this infection that's come back on his arm. Lord, that's been a big, scary battle for John and for Lori. And so, Lord, we just ask you to touch him today and richly bless him. God, I believe you're a big enough God. If you wanted, you could reach down and take that cellulite aside of John Brock's body. So we ask you to touch him today as well. And, Lord, we pray for Kathy Robinson. Lord, you know her need today. And, Father, I pray that you just meet Kathy Robinson right where she's at. And God, would you love her and richly bless her. And Lord, we pray for all of our body at Church 247. God, we look forward to the day that we're back together. But God, we're making the best that we can of what we have. So we ask you to bless us today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Now sit back, relax, and let's just enjoy what God has for us today. Amen. Thank you. Wasn't that great to have Joe uh, here with us being a part of that service? And the next thing we would probably be missing would be great music. Well, how about this? How about Brandon and Blair sitting on their back porch singing this song for us? I hope you enjoy this music today. Thank you, Brandon and Blair, for doing that. <laughs> Yeah. 
said amen hurry back next week thank you brandon and blair for that boy don't you can't, aren't you looking forward for us being back together and hearing some more of that fantastic music i would invite you this morning to grab a copy of god's word of the bible we're still going to be back in matthew chapter 6 this morning we're looking at that sermon on the mount where jesus was out on the mountainside and we don't know how many people were there but he was out talking to the folks in those three chapters, Matthew chapter 5 and 6 and 7. And I want to remind us just for a minute where we've been these last couple of weeks since our world has changed and been very different. On uh, Two weeks ago, we talked about the day that the world stood still. And we've now found ourselves for the first time in a very long time in a, in a forced or a mandatory Sabbath. You remember we looked at two stories of Jesus on the Sabbath day. One, he and his disciples were taking a stroll through the wheat fields. And I encourage you during this forced Sabbath to just slow down and maybe take a stroll. And I've heard several reports just yesterday. A lady told us, you know, I, I feel like I'm about able to, to catch up with my stuff. And I've enjoyed, quite frankly, this Sabbath time. The second story, we saw that Jesus was in the, in the synagogue and he healed somebody on the Sabbath. And my challenge to you during this time of forced Sabbath was to do something really good on the Sabbath. And we're seeing those reports come out in the news media all over the place of individuals and corporations doing good things. And our challenge, my challenge to you was to, during this time of forced Sabbath, was to do something good and then last week we talked about, uh, uh, he told us not to worry. And he, he gave us the beautiful picture of the birds, how the Lord feeds them, and, and the flowers, how the Father clothes them. And then he says, aren't you much more valuable than the birds and the flowers? He tells us three times in that story, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. If you'll just seek God and His righteousness, He'll take care of all of the rest of those things. We saw all that just from the book of Matthew studying this story. And so today we're still on the Sermon on the Mount and Jesus is going to tell us those incredible words that we know about and that's about how to pray. And I've titled the message today, A Conversation in Isolation. I want you to start reading with me in verse 5. Jesus says, first of all, Whenever you pray, and he is assuming, uh, Jesus is assuming that we'll pray. Now, we just heard 
great music and we heard a beautiful prayer from Joe and, and we heard his great words and everybody can't sing and everybody can't teach and everybody can't preach and everybody can't do those great things, but you know what? Everybody can pray. And when Jesus says this, whenever you pray, he's assuming that all of us, every one of us can pray. And then Jesus gives us two things don't to do whenever we pray. Let's keep going in verse 5. Whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. Because they love standing and praying in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. I assure you, they got their reward. Wow, what harsh words that Jesus would have for a person who was praying. He was saying, don't pray like the hypocrites or the, the plastic people who have a, a mask on. Because you see, if they're praying and they're just out there on the streets and, and they're uh, praying to be seen by people, well, they've been seen by people and they have their reward. Don't, number one, is don't pray to be seen or heard. That was verse 5. Jump with me to verse 7 now. Jesus says the second thing to do is don't pray. Don't pray in, uh, by recitation. <laughs> verse 6 says, whatever you pray, you must be not be like the hypocrites because they love to pray. And then verses 7 and 8, he says, when you pray, don't babble like the idolaters. Since they imagine they'll be heard for their many words, don't be like them because your father knows that you have knows these things before you ask them. Those would be like the mystical or the canned prayers. Those prayers that we pray like we've just got to pray it just right or we've got to say the right words or we've got to say the canned words or, or God won't hear us. And Jesus is saying to him, look, your father already knows what your needs are. He already knows uh, what things that you have that you need. You don't need to be babbling and praying with just these rope, uh, these recited prayers. Your father knows that you have those things. As if it were some ritual, some religious thing that we have to do in order to be, ter in order to be her ter uh, heard. So don't pray to be seen or be heard and don't pray with these mystical prayers. And then Jesus gives us in verse 6, he gives us the one thing that we should do. But when you pray, go into your private room. Now, your Bible might say closet. When you pray, go into your private room, shut your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Can I just ask you today, do you feel like that you have been in isolation a lot of us are self-quarantining, and it feels like that we, we are, we're kind of in isolation. Some of you, I imagine, feel like that. Perhaps folks that live alone, you might feel like that you are in, this, in isolation. Can I just encourage you with this verse right here? Jesus says, when you pray, go into your private room. That word private room, it means a room, an inner room, where there are no windows. And there are no doors. There's nobody looking. You don't have anybody to impress. Just go into that private room and shut your door and pray to your Father who is in secret. May I ask you, do you feel like that you have been in isolation? I know some people for Hope and I yesterday, we got, it and, uh, we got out and drove around a little bit uh, just because we had cabin fever. And we can certainly feel like we're in isolation. We've been trying to do that. Can I just encourage you that if you've been in isolation today in your home, can I encourage you what Jesus specifically told us to do? Go and have a conversation in isolation. It's when we get to this place, this place of isolation, there's nobody there in the house. There's nobody in the room. There are no windows. There are no doors. There's nobody looking. It is just us talking to the Father. So not just in quarantine, I encourage you, maybe you live alone and you're in your house and you're quarantined, I want to encourage you to take it one step further and to take yourself just like Jesus asks us to do and to go into isolation. Let's try. Come on, let's go. Here we're going into isolation. 
And you see, when we get into this private room, this is our, this is our private room, our storage closet. And, and you notice here that there's a chair and it kind of looks like a throne. And so the, the, Jesus just now told us, whenever you pray, go into the private room and shut the door. And your father who is in secret, your father who is sitting right here on this throne, your father who is in secret, he will hear you in secret and he will reward you. So I'm just going to sit right here on my little chair and I'm in a little private room. And there's nobody here. I'm not just in self-quarantine in my, my, in my house. I've now come to this place of isolation. There are no windows. There are no doors. It is just me and a throne. And my Father hears in secret. And then Jesus begins to tell us, Therefore, when you pray, this is the way that I want you to pray. We're in verse 9. Therefore, you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven. Can I remind you that Jesus was God's only son? And his father was his father. I'm surprised he didn't say when you pray, say, hey, Jesus' father. Do you know what Jesus just did right here in this verse? Jesus, for the first time, he shared his father with you and with me and his disciples. Our, when you pray, you're calling out to our Father because I, Jesus, I am sharing my Father with you. You know what? We get to this room by ourselves, and just like Brandon and Blair saying, man, there was Jesus, and there was his Father. When you pray, pray like this, our Father who is in heaven. This is a big father. He is sitting here on this throne before me in this quiet place, in this closet, in this place of isolation. My father, our father, which is in heaven. Big father, capital F father. And I will tell you, you've heard, and I thank you, Joe, for, for calling out my earthly father's name in prayer. And I've done that many times over these last weeks and months. I've called out to my heavenly father on behalf of my earthly father. Our father which is in heaven. Then it says your name be honored as holy. Your Bible may say hallowed be your name. That word hallowed, it means holy. It means different. It means I'm sitting here in a closet in isolation and I'm not just talking to an empty chair. I'm talking to holy God. I'm talking to different God. I'm talking to that omni God, that God who is omnipresent. So not only is he a father in heaven, but that father who sees me in secret, he is omnipresent. He is right here with me in this closet in isolation isolation. Our Father which is in heaven, the all-powerful, all-knowing all God. That's the word omniscient. It means all-knowing God. And then the omnipresent, it means everywhere present. You may remember the psalmist David saying, where can I flee from your presence? Can I go to the highest heavens? Nope, you're there. Can I flee and escape down to the lowest hell? No, even if I were to go there, you're with me as well. Pray when you get to this quiet place in this closet in isolation and it's only you and the Father who sits on the throne, the throne of heaven and the throne of this quiet place with you, our Father which is in heaven, holy, hallowed, different, unique, powerful be your name. And then he says, your kingdom come and your will be done. Now, you remember the word kingdom means a jurisdiction. So the kingdom of America is our 50 states and those territories like Puerto Rico that are under the jurisdiction of America. That's the American kingdom. And then there's the, the kingdom of China, all of those areas under the jurisdiction of China or of Russia or of the United Kingdom over uh, in the Western uh, over in Western Europe, that kingdom is the area of jurisdiction. And so Jesus says, when you get to this quiet place and it's only you and the Father sitting there with you on the throne, holy God, you can call out and say, 
Father, would your kingdom come to earth. Your jurisdiction and your power and your authority. And I just want to say to you today, my friend, it is right here. It is in this closet. It is in isolation. It is with me having a conversation in isolation with the Father that kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. It is here that strongholds are brought down. It is here that battles are won. It is here that victories are claimed. Now, I don't know about you, perhaps living at home, maybe by yourself in isolation. We often watch the television and it looks sometimes on the television as though it is happening on the television when the kings get together. The kingdoms talk about, the kings talk together about what's going to happen in our world. And sometimes we're tempted to sit helplessly and hopelessly at home on our chair wondering what the kings are going to decide. I want to tell you, my friend, it is right here. It is in this place, it is in this conversation in isolation that kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. I shared with you yesterday, for many of you, if you got the email that I sent out, I often wonder, I've wondered recently why it is that God has caused this to happen or allowed it to happen or sovereignly watching over. I don't know what your theology is on that, whatever it is, that's fine. But why is this happening? I believe perhaps it's because Tens of hundreds of thousands of perhaps millions of people have been calling out to God, Father, would your kingdom come and your will be done right here on earth just like your kingdom is in heaven. The jurisdiction that you have in heaven, the rule and the reign that you have in heaven, Father, would you bring that right here to our earth? And we've said, I shared just a minute ago already, outside of the news about the coronavirus, basically every other news report is the news report of somebody doing good. Somebody, an individual or a small business or a large corporation making the decision, we are going to do good to help humanity. Father, would your kingdom come to our earth? Would your will be done here like it is in heaven? Imagine the kingdom in heaven. There is no murder. Nobody is killing each other. Nobody is stealing each other or taking from one another. None of that's happening. In the kingdom that is in heaven, people are kind. People are good and people are loving. Father, would you bring that kingdom from heaven down here to earth? Would your kingdom come and your will be done here on earth just like it's being done in heaven? Verse 11, Father, would you give us today our daily bread? I don't know if you're at home by yourself and maybe your cupboards are, are a little bit thin or a little bit bare or maybe you've lost your job this week and you're trying to apply for unemployment and you don't know where the next meal is coming from. Maybe you need to go in isolation and have a conversation with Almighty God and say, Father, just today would you provide for me my daily bread? I don't know where it's coming from. I don't want to worry about tomorrow's daily bread. Father, tomorrow I plan to come back today in this place, in this closet, and have a conversation in isolation again with you. And tomorrow I'm going to ask you again, Father, would you give me today my daily bread? Would you meet my needs today? Give us this day our daily bread. And he would reemphasize to us, my friend, Consider the, the flowers of the field and the birds of the air. You're worth more than they. You don't need to worry about that. Your Heavenly Father knows that you need those things even before you ask them. So all I'm asking, Father, on the throne here today with me, would you just give to me today my daily bread? Give us our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, this gets just a little bit hard. Jesus is saying, when I come to this place and it's just me and my Father that I call out and ask God to forgive me my debts or my sins. 
Now, I will say to you, a lot of people are bothered by verses like this in the Bible that, hey, how why is the Bible calling me a sinner? I'm not that bad a person. Well, I'll just tell you from my personal experience, I know my life and my heart and my thoughts and my words and my actions, and I understand that I am a sinner and that I do have debts before God. And so Jesus is saying, would you get to this place of isolation in this one-on-one -on -one conversation with Almighty God, just you and Sovereign God, Father, would you forgive my sins? Would you forgive my debts and my trespasses? Would you forgive me, Father, for the things that I've said and the things that I've thought and the things that I've done that are not honoring to you? Give uh, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Now that's where it gets just a little bit hard in this conversation in isolation with God. I need to forgive. Father, I know you're sitting there in this throne in front of me. I know that I need to forgive those who have, who have debted against me or who have trespassed me or who have offended me. And I will just say to you that I think that Jesus is saying right here, this is how that our prayers get purified. This is how our motives get cleaned up. It's just not me coming to Jesus or to God with a laundry list of all the things. Lord, my name's Jimmy, and I'll take all you give me. It's this part of the prayer that purifies our motives. Lord, would you forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors? And then he says in verse 13, and do not bring us into temptation. Or maybe your Bible says, lead us not into temptation. Take us away from temptation. May I just say to you that in these times especially, the things that, that Satan would be quick to tempt us about are things like the temptation to become afraid in these uncertain times. Father, would you lead me not into the temptation of being afraid? Father, would you lead me not into the temptation of being lonely, of feeling like I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm trapped and I'm cooped up? Would you lead me not into that temptation to feel lonely or to feel helpless or hopeless in these times? Would you help me to see I can have a conversation with sovereign God and would you deliver me from the evil one, from, from uh, uh, lead me not into temptation? Uh, uh, Lord, would you help me not to be tempted to, to experience self-pity and to feel sorry for myself in these days? Instead, may I just come right here to this place, this private room, and have a conversation of joy with you and call out to you with boldness and authority. Bring us not into temptation and deliver us from the evil one. Bring us not into temptation is to keep us away from the evil one, but delivering us from the evil one. That's the positive thing. That's where we celebrate victories. Father, would you deliver me in victory? Would you give me some wins? Father, would you hear my prayers? Would you not only lead me into temptation, would you deliver me? Would you give me victory in the battles? Would you give me victory over the evil one? And then he says, <laughs> Lord, Father, for yours, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the kingdom that we're looking for. Yours is the kingdom that we want. We want your rule and your reign to come to the earth. Yours is the kingdom and yours is the power. It, Lord, it's your great power. It's not the power of all of the other kings and the, all of the other kingdoms. Lord, it's your power. And Lord, it's your glory that we're looking for. It's not the glory of the athletes or the government leaders or the, or the celebrities. Father, it's your glory that we want to see. We want to see what you can do. We want to see your greatness and your authority. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if we were to take this prayer and we were to put it all together, you've probably said it hundreds of thousands of times perhaps in your life. Let's just say that prayer together again. Here we are in this quiet place, in this closet. It feels like we're alone in isolation. There are no windows. There are no doors. There's no one to look. There's no one to peek around. There's no one to impress. There is no pretense. There is no fakeness. There is no hypocrisy. It's just me and my father sitting on his throne and me calling out to him in prayer like this. Our father, which is in heaven, 
Your name be honored as holy. Hallowed, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, bring your kingdom to us. Give us this day, today, our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, our trespasses. Forgive us our sins as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us into temptation. Lord, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And then you know what Jesus would challenge us to do? Jesus would challenge us to get up with boldness and authority and confidence. And we walk away for this day from this place of prayer and with the throne room of God, of our Father in heaven. Father, we'll be back tomorrow to this place. But today, we get up and boldly we walk out of this closet. We walk out of this private room in authority that you have heard our prayers. So let's go back now and rejoin the rest of of the church as we celebrate the end of this service with boldness and confidence that he has heard our prayers and our requests and our needs before him. So Jesus comes back and tells us to do that and to go into his presence and I would say, yeah, wow, what an amazing conversation that we have an opportunity to have with God. Being in quarantine, I'm just going to not just go to quarantine. I'm going straight to, into isolation, and I'm going to have a conversation with my Father in heaven who, who, who tells me that he hears my prayers. Do you remember these words from the, the writer of the book of Hebrews? Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace. I just showed you our little chair that represents the throne of God. He's sitting there. Let us go and approach, maybe in private, in isolation. Let us approach the throne of grace. Do you remember that the word grace is the word gift? Father, I am coming boldly. Let us approach the throne of grace boldly. Father, I am coming into your presence with boldness because I'm, I'm coming to your throne of gifts, your throne of giftedness. Father, do you have a gift for me? We know the word grace means it, it is getting something that we don't deserve. Father, I don't deserve it, deserve it, but I'm coming boldly to your throne and I'm asking you, Father, would you please give to me the gifts, the blessings that I need in my life? Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that right when I need it, I may receive mercy and find grace to help me right at the proper time. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. We talked a couple of weeks ago about God being right on time. Father, I am coming boldly into your presence. I'm coming boldly to your throne, just me and you, no one listening, no one watching, no one looking around. I'm coming boldly into your presence, and I'm asking, Father, to receive your mercy. Would you not give me what I, what I deserve and your grace? Would you please give to me, Father, what I don't deserve, boldly in your presence? It's almost like it was an amazing adventure or, 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 or an egg hunt where we just go out and we look and look at that gift. Look at God's grace. Look at what God has done for me. Wow, that happened in my life and it didn't like it, look it like it was going to make sense. And wow, Father, you have turned that into a gift. You have turned that into a prize. You have turned that into a, a surprise for me. Thank you, Father, as I come boldly into your throne of grace. You've taken that thing maybe that didn't look right, and you've turned it into mercy, and you've helped me find grace in my life. So we can be fearful and lonely and be tempted to feel like we're in isolation, or we can boldly go and meet sovereign God at the throne of grace. Then I want you to see this verse that, that, that Paul wrote to us. 
wrote to his friend Timothy that we now have access to. You remember this verse. In these uncertain times in our world, in our culture, when we're tempted to feel these things, Paul reminds his friend Timothy, Hey, Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of fearfulness, but a spirit of love, of power, and love, and of sound judgment. Can I just say that bold and powerful and loving and sound judgment, those are the characteristics, those are the attributes that you and I as Christians, those are the things that we need in these uncertain times in our world. Maybe that's the prayer you need to have in isolation. Father, would you help me not to be fearful, but would you give to me that spirit of power and of love and of a strong, settled, stable mind? Now let me ask you, what does that look like today? I want to show you a picture here. This is a picture of our master closet at our house. And those post-it notes on the wall are the picture of the pastor's wife. Those are names and verses that she's got written on her private room in isolation. That's our pastor's wife. That's your pastor's wife calling out to God in prayer. It happens it is a place where me to make a conscious decision. I'm going to that place of prayer and I'm going to spend the time that I need and I'm going to write those things down and maybe stick them on the wall. I'm going to call out to God so that He would fill me not with fearfulness about whatever it is that I've written down here. That person, maybe, it, maybe it's a child, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a broken relationship, maybe it's something at work, maybe it's a financial problem, whatever it is, I'm going to go in isolation and I'm going to write it down and I'm going to paste it on the wall and day after day after day, I'm going to the throne and I'm going to remind my father of, these, of, this, of this need. I'm going to remind my father of, this, of my heart. And I'll just tell you that Friday night we, uh, we prayed for you all by name. If, if, you're, if you're on our little list, we prayed for you. And I'm not saying that so I can to brag the fact that we prayed for you. But I want you to know that we prayed for you, that God would empower you. And that God would make you bold. And that we would together, in this quiet place together, that we would see strongholds. Drop, fall, strongholds uh, fall, and kingdoms rise, and victories made as we go into isolation and have a conversation with Sovereign God. Today you might be listening and you say, Clayton, that sounds really good, but I just don't deserve to have a conversation with God. The things that I've done in my life, I just, I, I don't deserve to have a prayer uh, before God. I don't deserve to go before God like that and, and to pray with boldness and confidence. I can't do that, Clayton. I wish I could. Well, let me just say to you today, friend, that you can. I want you to listen to these last couple of verses, verses 14 and 15. Jesus goes back. As soon as he finishes this prayer, he goes back and he talks about these verses. You see, my friends, Jesus would say to us, if you forgive people their wrongdoing, your heavenly Father will forgive you as well. But if you don't forgive people, your Father will not forgive your wrongdoing. And I'll tell you, those are pretty hard words. Do you know what Jesus is saying to us? Jesus is saying, if you want to be forgiven by your heavenly Father, you need to forgive those other people. Why is that so important? Because if Clayton is willing to forgive those other people who have done him wrong and mistreated him and offended him and, and maybe those are his enemies, if Clayton is willing to forgive those people, then Clayton probably understands what's really happened. What's really happened, if I've forgiven, if I'm willing to forgive another person for their wrongdoing, then I probably understand what it was that Jesus did for me and his father did for me when he looked down from heaven and he said, Clayton is a sinner and he has sinned against me and he has a debt to pay to me. But I want Clayton to know that I am willing to forgive him. And so what did he do? He brought his son Jesus into the world 
to die on that cross, to pay the debt, to pay the penalty for Clayton's sin, so that now I can be forgiven before God, and I can have a relationship now with my Heavenly Father. Jesus would say to us, Clayton, if you're willing to forgive somebody else who has sinned against you, then that means you understand, Clayton, what I have done for you. And I want to say to you, my friend, that if you're there today and you're sitting and listening and thinking, boy, I need that in my life. I need to be forgiven by God. I need to know God's forgiveness. I'm going to lead us in a little prayer right now. And I'm going to ask you right there where you're at in your home, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me, asking for God's forgiveness. Pray with me. Dear Father in heaven, I understand and realize that I am a sinner and that I need you and I need a Savior and I need forgiveness. And today, Father, I understand that your Son, Jesus Christ, came to this earth to pay the penalty for my sin and the debt of my sin that I could not pay for myself. And today, Father... I ask your son, Jesus, to come into my life. I ask you, Father, to forgive my sins. And I ask you to wash me white and clean and forgive me. And then, Father, I ask you that you would help me now to go out and forgive those who have sinned and have debts against me. As I accept your freedom and your forgiveness and your grace and your love and your power, Lord, would you help me now to go share your grace and your love and your forgiveness and your power with those who have debts against me. I ask you to forgive me and to come into my life I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to know that I'm praying for you. The words of the song that we often hear, uh, we're going to play this at, at, the, at the end. It talks about holy water. It talks about forgiveness. The words say, Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. It's like the sound of a symphony to my ears. The sound of your forgiveness is like holy water on my skin, cleaning me up. I pray that for you today. Church family, I pray for you that as we find ourselves in isolation and we move to that quiet place and to have a conversation with God, I pray that those strongholds will fall and that we will hear testimony of God bringing victories and bringing down kingdoms in your life. I love you and I'm I'm just going to close this in a short prayer and then we're just going to hear the, that amazing song, Holy Water, that talks about forgiveness. Pray with me. Father, I pray for a person this, this morning that may have said that prayer for me asking for forgiveness. I pray that they would experience a bath with holy water and that they would know your forgiveness, your complete forgiveness, where you wipe away all of the dead and the balance is zero and we are made right in your presence. I pray, Father, this morning for someone who has just accepted you and the forgiveness that you offer in your son, Jesus Christ. I pray that they would experience holy water on their skin. And then for each person here today, Father, as we begin to call out to you and take advantage of this, this quiet time, this quarantine, as we determine to go into isolation, just you and us in the throne room of God and have a conversation with you, Father, would you hear and answer our prayers? We thank you and praise you and we love you. I pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Got a mold my knees again. Got a bed please again. I need you. Oh, I need you. Walking down these days. Oh, my God.
and you want to reach out to us, you can just email us at info at church247.net. You can find that on our, on our uh, website. Just let us know that Jesus has come into your life and forgiven you. I'm going to close this in a short prayer. I want to invite you to come back on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock right here on the same channel. Let's pray together. Father, we walk away now in your presence and in your power and in your spirit. Father, boldly we approach this next day. We approach this day that you have given us with authority, with power. We release us, Father, now we ask with your blessings and your presence. We pray together in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Thank you very much. Have a great day.